Today I'm gonna show you how you can paint makeup for your characters in Blender. It's fully procedural and gives you a lot of control. Let's start with the fresh Blender scene. First thing I'm gonna do is of course I'm gonna delete everything. And then I'm gonna rename this collection to char, which stands for character. And I'm gonna go into file, import, and I'm gonna import my character files. And of course here I'm using my character, but you can also use any character, for example, human generator, or you can use this character. And I have tutorial on that on my YouTube page as well. It honestly doesn't matter what character you use because the only thing that is important is that your character or your sculpt should have UVs. Otherwise you will not be able to paint any texture maps and we are going to be using texture maps mostly. If you want me to do a tutorial on UVs, let me know, but I think you are already familiar with that. I'm going to select everything shade smooth. Now let's set the basic materials. I'm going to add new collection and I'm going to call it cam, which stands for camera. And I'm going to add new for the camera. What I'm going to use is standard Instagram resolution, which is 180 to 1920 and we need to move it a bit because right now it's facing nothing. Let's do some sort of portrait and don't forget to change the focal link here to something like 90 or even 100 just so we have a basic frame going on here. If you're interested, I made this character from 3D scan store base, then I changed the UVs and applied V face maps to it. So the base color and the normals are from that. And so yes, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load the normal and uh, I'll be the color. That's all we need. If you have roughness, that's good. You can also load the roughness, but if you don't, you can also paint it as well. I'm gonna show you how you can do that. So let's delete the roughness and let's focus on normals and also the albedo map. As you can see now, I'm plugging the albedo map into base color, but that's not exactly what we need to do. We also need to set the subsurface for the face to look real. And let's increase the weight just so you can see what subsurface does. And as you can see right now, it looks way more real. Kind of looks like silicone, so it's a bit too much, but you get the idea. And we're gonna use the weight of a one, but at the same time, we're gonna use the scale of 0.01 to compensate that. And it's much, much better. And for the random walk, we can also set the random walk skin, which also adds the IOR. And for the skin, IOR is usually 1.48 or something like that, but you can use whatever you feel like suits your character. And it automatically sets the right colors for the radius. This is like a reddish type of color. Let's change the scale um, to something like 0.00. .00 seven it depends on the scale of your character so if you increase it all the way up as you can see it becomes like transparent so you really need to be careful with that to create the most realistic result and for the normal map we need to create a normal map node we can select the uv map here and also we need to connect the normal to normal now. We also need to change the color space of our normal map from sRGB to non-color. And now we have our normal map as well. One thing that we forgot is the tier texture. So let's select the tier here. And it's called iWet here. And I'm not sure how this principal PSD have set it up. It's basically the one that Blender created itself. So I'm just gonna delete it in case there are some different settings that I'm not sure about. And I'm just gonna create a new one. It's just a good practice to do so. And I'm gonna increase the transmission to one. And we can also change the IOR to 1.6. This is our initial setup of the skin shader and the character itself. Let's start painting the makeup directly in Blender over this albedo image. To do so, we need to create our setup first. So the plan is that we're gonna do the foundation, then we're gonna do some blush, and then we're gonna add some shadows on the eyes, and then we're also gonna be creating the roughness texture. Let's select our character and switch to the texture paint tab. And we can also change the render engine to Eevee and switch this view to render view. This is really 
bad for painting textures. It's like really wide angle lens. And to change the viewport camera, what you can do is you can press M and go to view. And here you can change the focal length for the viewport to something like 100. And now it's way easier to paint the textures because it's not as distorted as it was before. This is our image view. And as you can see, now it shows the albedo texture. Let's open a new tab down here and let's switch it to shader editor. And now let's create a new image texture. Now let's hit new. Let's rename it to foundation. And let's change the resolution to 4K. One important thing here is you need to go to color and decrease the alpha. So the alpha is fully transparent and you can hit new image. I'm gonna create a mix node and I'm gonna change the float to color. We're gonna plug the albedo to A and the foundation to B. And then we also need to plug the alpha to factor here. And the result goes to base color. As you can see, nothing really happens. It just updated. But now we can actually paint to this foundation texture. And it will show as a new layer of makeup. So before doing anything, actually, I'm going to go and hit this image button. And I'm going to press save. And you can just save as image because it always gonna save where your Blender project file is. And now this foundation is saved and we can start painting with the symmetry turned on. We can start painting our foundation. And if you want to erase something, all you need to do is change this blend from mix to erase alpha. And then you can erase, for example, the lips. And then what we can do is select the soften brush. We can increase the radius a bit and we can start softening it up. Sometimes it's also easier to work on the image itself in this viewer instead of 3D viewer. So take advantage of that too. And let's say I'm happy with what I've painted, but of course I've could have done a better job painting this foundation map. There is two things that we still need to do. Um, as you can see, it's quite harsh. First of all, we need to blur it and then we need to change the opacity. And good thing is that you can do it fully procedurally inside this shader editor. And let me show you how you can do that. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a mix note once again I'm gonna change it to color and I'm gonna change the mix to multiply and then we can plug our foundation first of all to the A input here and result goes to B once again but then we can change the B to B black and now as you can see we changed the opacity quite harshly and we can then increase or decrease the opacity with this factor and 0.0 4 usually works best for me. Also, we need to blur it, of course. And to blur it, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the foundation and press Ctrl T. And if you have your node wrangler enabled, it will automatically create texture coordinate and mapping for you. And then we need to plug a couple of things here. We're gonna use the mix node once again. We're gonna plug it here. And here we're gonna use color. We're gonna plug the mapping into color A. And we also need to create create one node called noise texture and this noise texture will go to B here and we're gonna change the scale to something like 20,000 and now if we plug this result into the vector as you can see it takes a minute to load now it's blurred as you can see on this image it's blurred and this is exactly what we need and we can control the blurriness with this factor so if we decrease it all the way back to zero it's now the image that we painted and if we increase it to something like 0.4 then it's fully blurred and this is exactly what foundation does and let me put it to something like 0.2. Yeah, now we have our foundation. And by using this technique, you can add as many layers as you want. So basically, let's move it a bit back here. Let me select everything here and let's move it back. And I'm just gonna show you how you can also do the blush. So we're gonna create once again the image texture. And this time we're gonna create a new image texture and let's call it blush. 
and let's also do 4k image here and don't forget we need to change the alpha you need to press the color and change the alpha all the way back to zero so the alpha is transparent basically and we can press new image now we need to create another mix node we can copy this node and we can plug the mix to mix a to A. For the second color, it's gonna be the blush here. Don't forget, we need also to put the alpha into factor here. Again, nothing changed in the viewport, but all you need to do now is select some sort of blushy color here. Let's change the color to something a bit more appealing, like this. It's a bit too much, but it's fine. Let's add a little bit on the nose as well. And once again, I'm gonna create a mix node, put it in here, change it to color, and then change it to multiply. And we're gonna change the color of the B input to black, and then we can control the opacity with it. And then we also need to create the same thing here to control the blurriness. We put the vector into A color into B and then as you can see it's blurred and now we have a blush and this is a really nice workflow and you don't need to use substance painter and if you for example if you're not really happy with this result if you want to have more control you can always just save these images and manually adjust them in Photoshop and combine them together in Photoshop as well. Blender really helps to visualize the result you are doing and now let's create one more texture and this texture is gonna be the roughness texture so we're gonna create image texture once again I'm gonna create a new texture call it rough 4k is fine and new image I'm actually gonna plug the color into base color because we need to visualize what we are working on and I'm gonna go and select the roughness here just so we can see it a bit better I can select the white color because we don't need any color why is here and let's just do like glossy lips one thing i actually forgot about is that when you're working with roughness the roughness base should be white because the black parts are actually gonna be shiny so we need to fill it with white i'm just gonna do this and yeah that's it so now we can go back to black color and we can start painting our roughness let's do something on the lips here Let's add some to the T-zone, it's called, on the cheeks. This is just an example and I recommend you to spend way more time than I'm doing here to create really nice result. And once you are done, you can reconnect the base color to base color. And now we can connect the roughness color into roughness here. And as you can see, now we have our shiny lips. Now we have our shiny nose and forehead area. And this is how you can create roughness. If you wanna do like way more glossy lips, what we can also do is you can duplicate this roughness node. You can create a invert color you can connect color to color, and then this color you need to connect into the weight. When you're working with coating, it's quite the opposite of working with roughness. So with the roughness, the black areas are gonna be shiny, and with the coating, the white areas are gonna be shiny. We can increase the IOR to something like two, and as you can see, it gives this really like doll-like result. And this is the final result. I'm not gonna lie, I also use some Photoshop to add freckles to kind of color correct the eyeshadow area. But other than that, you can always done everything inside of Blender. Make sure to click the like button if you like this video. Check out my Patreon for more cool tutorials and see you in the next videos. Bye.